Hello everybody. Today we're looking at some entity stuff. I'm going to cut and paste a few things um, around entities into the comments here. So as I talk, you can follow along. Um, it's first and foremost. So generally speaking, for most of us, at least in the WCFO program, not all of us because we do have attorneys, most of us are not attorneys. So first and foremost, if I'm talking to a prospect or a client, I want to make darn sure they've got a good corporate and tax attorney. We were on a call with a CEO group yesterday. I was helping a WCFO VIP member um, and we were um, right off the bat, they were like, oh yeah, we set up an LLC and we're set about to set up a management company. And I was like, wait a minute, slow down. Do you have a good attorney? Secondly, have you actually thought through your structure and you looked at the pros and cons of how you want to set up a multi-entity or single entity structure and C corps versus LLCs, et cetera? They hadn't done any of that. So they just, again, you know, sometimes the ready, aim, fire, um, or ready, fire, aim strategy works. Um, sometimes it doesn't. So with, with um, when you're going into a multi-million dollar um, cannabis company, more than likely there's investors or lenders. And yes, there are in this case, they had four different investors and slash owners. And so the question when they say, what's the best structure? The answer is always, it depends on many things. The answer is never, this is the right structure. That's the right structure. So anyone who tells you that, stop right there you know they're giving you the wrong answer if they don't say it depends let's look at each investor let's look at what their goals are and what their personal setup is so if you have one investor that's a billionaire which i've seen what are their goals you know the answer right off the bat if you're a billionaire your goal is to protect your assets way 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 above anything about tax minimization now, say the billionaire investor's got the young nephew who's 25 years old who doesn't have a bunch of assets. What's the goal of that younger 25-year-old? Well, they don't have any assets to protect, so they could care less about that. They um, are focused on tax minimization and beating 280. So, first of all, that's just a very simple example. We need to know the tax situation of every single owner. And so, if you have wealthy investors that may not be able to utilize 199A into the tax code, um, they may have different issues than another owner that has a different setup of other. So you have to look at their other stuff besides this cannabis entity. Do they have other companies? Do they have other assets? And so we need to, our first step as accountants is to ask questions. And so we're not attorneys, but I've found many times attorneys are just spouting out advice, do this or do that, without diving in and actually looking at the owner's personal situation, looking at their personal assets, their personal legal situations, their trusts or not, or companies, and their tax situation. So usually we need a team of people. We need to look, okay, who's doing your tax return? Let's see what the tax issues are. Let's see what the legal issues are and go from there. So then let's just start asking questions. Um, here are some that I'm going to post right in here. How many owners are there now and later? What are we expecting? What's the goal for each owner? Um, is capital being raised? Is there an exit plan and when? That would So if there's an exit plan in three to five years, like many of these startups, you may want to be thinking about, huh, maybe there's 1202 benefits. C-Corps, we already know, have better asset protection. Also, maybe better for raising capital. Also, maybe better for exit. And oh, by the way, maybe have some tax savings as well. We want to look at the t potential rates, new rates. So we want to look at all these different questions. And we want to involve, make sure who's their corporate attorney, who's their tax attorney. Let's bring these people in. Let's discuss things. And then let's set up the, the optimal structure for this, this avenue. Now, the second question that these people just dove into, again, around bad advice is, oh, we have to have a management company. And I was like, why? Did your attorney tell you to have a management company? Is there actually a legitimate reason or is the reason to beat the tax code? Because that's a lousy reason and it won't work. The, the IRS is well aware of that. You're like, oh, I'm going to have a management company. They, they had supposedly one farm and they were going to have a, a equipment company the cannabis company and a management company is like, well, when the IRS shows up and they drive up to the farm and they're like, huh, it looks like a farm to us. Um, you say there's three legal entities around that farm, but to us, it looks like one business. Remember, 280E applies 
not to a set of legal entities or S corps or C corps. 280 applies to a trade or business. So you could have 25 entities for that trade or business, one business, or you could have one entity that maybe has three or four trade or businesses in it. 280 applies to a trade or business if the IRS shows up and you set up structures with really no reason. They're all the same owners of each entity and they're basically just serving this one enterprise you're probably gonna lose out. So be super careful on that. And I'm gonna post in a couple of these comments as well. So multi-entity can have some pros. I look at some pros and cons. You're gonna have higher costs. There's more accounting, more tax work. Can possibly meet goals, can possibly lower a little bit of tax, maybe. So let's be super careful and let's dive in deep before we go down that strategy. Um, C Corp. Um, I'm going to post some stuff here about C Corps. Um, there's actually many more benefits than the current tax code right now, especially if the goal, like many cannabis companies, you're going through a ton of capital. Um, and so you're not planning distributions from year one to five. You're just going to reinvest any, any capital back into the company. So that means the C-Corp is only 21% rate. Maybe it's in a state that has good tax, state tax rates. Um, if you're not going to do distribution, you might get some taxable, um, capital gain exclusion under 1202. Also, if the IRS comes in to audit that C-Corp or S-Corp or whatever, which is very, very likely, that audit will stay at the C-Corp level. That can be very important to investors. So if they're investing in an S-Corp or an LLC, and the IRS shows up to invest that LLC, they can be like, oh, let's look at Joe's tax return. He's a billionaire investor or 100 million. Let's go see what we can find in his personal tax return. Investors do not like that. That is a big downside to um, LLCs and or S Corps um, flow throughs. Um, so let's look at, at some of the issues on those. I'll, I'll toss those in here in comments as well. Um, things to consider down here. So one is i've seen this happen several times um, uh, someone and so i saw this in in a portland dispensary chain a guy owned 35 percent he invested on a three million bucks and so every single year what happened he got a k-1 with a lot of taxable income on it and he had to write a big fat check to the irs every year and he said hey andrew i'm paying money to the irs and these owners who i invested in that i only own 35 percent of the company um I'm having to pay tax, but they, they have no money for distributions. They're spending all the money on the dispensary. And I was like, yeah, it's too bad you didn't put that in your LLC document. Um, he had, what can you do? You own 35%, you can't do anything. You're gonna keep getting taxes. Um, if they don't do an exit or, or distributions, you're kind of stuck. Be very careful on a flow-through entity in this industry. So LLCs and flow-throughs are great for my prior industry for years ago, the oil and gas industry. Many people are thinking, oh, same deal as oil and gas. This is a risky industry, let's do this. Be careful, um, it's exactly 180 degrees opposite. Oil and gas industry has massive tax breaks. Um, so it's good to get the K-1, you get all these tax breaks on the K-1. Um, cannabis has no tax breaks, so you get a lot of penalties on your K-1, so be super careful. Um, Karen's looking for accounting software. Um, Karen, first and foremost, I hope you have a dope CFO um, VIP accountant on your team. That's more important than any accounting software because you're going to be dealing with um, your, your state seed to sale, which could be metric, could be MJ Freeway or Biotrack. You need your accounting system. Then you're going to need a, a um, POS system, which could be GreenBits, FlowHub, Flourish. There's lots of them. Um, the accounting software is more often than not going to be um, QBO, Zero, Accounting Suite. Um, but again, software is not your main issue. You want a world-class accountant to do this right. I, the IRS will be visiting you. The states will be visiting you. If you don't do it right, most or not, you will um, not be in a good place. I find many people, you know, you're spending maybe millions of dollars on your farm or your dispensary or whatever, and they're trying to cut corners on accounting and tax. Don't do it. It's, it's yeah, that's not the place to cut corners in this industry um, as well. So make sure you've got that good person on board because what, what are we doing with these different software? So dispensary, you're going to have three at a minimum, POS, 
counting seed to sale. We got to do lots of reconciliations. We need lots of tools and work papers. We need to be tracking cannabis versus non-cannabis. We have to have cost accounting templates. Do it right or beware. Um, most people that are not in the Dope CFO program do, simply don't have the tools, the education, the knowledge, the community. We have a deep, deep community as well. And now, if you're an accountant out there and you want information, um, and, and Crystal, by the way, says you'd love to help, help her. Crystal is, yeah, an amazing in our program, so you can message her right there below. Um, and Crystal, glad you're hearing this so that we can um, go through more on, on the entity side as well. And you can share this. This live video will be up on our Facebook um, videos as well. Um, there's Beto. Um, do you think a company that creates beverages can capture an identity that creates a recipe, so like a branding. So we've seen a lot of that, an IP or branding company. Again, what does it look like? So let's just pretend Joe owns the cannabis company and Joe owns the IP company, he says, oh, this is separate and I'm gonna rent the, the, the brand or the recipe or the IP or whatever over here. And then I'm gonna deduct a bunch of money over here. It's, if it's one trader business with one person but same owners, it's going to be very difficult. Now, if you have a branding company that has recipes and you brand to your cannabis company and you brand to company B, C, D, E, and it looks like an actual real company, okay, that makes more sense. You got The IRS is going to come in this, and they, they've already said this. They're going to look at 10,000 feet. If it looks like it's one company, it looks like you're just trying to play games to beat 2AD, it's not going to work. Hey, James is another good one as well. Um, he's in our group. Um, I have everything but accounting. Yeah, the, and Karen, I find that's the great, great example. So many people come into this with dispensary farm, whatever. And they're like, okay, I've got my marketing. I know how to grow my pot. I know where to buy it. I got my license. I got my insurance. And like, oh, maybe I need a bookkeeper for accounting and tax. Accounting tax is super important. My contention is if your goal is to build a dispensary and do an exit or whatever in five to 10 years, um, your easily 10 to 15 percent of your value will be on world-class accounting and tax. People don't get that. You want to do a 50 million dollar exit, just budget you know seven to ten million for the accounting and tax value just by doing things right as well. So anyway, hope that helped everyone today and you can always post more comments in here if I didn't get to everyone's questions and we will see you from there.